Good Tuesday morning. Welcome to Begin in the Word. Our text today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, beginning in verse 24, where the Bible says, When they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax went up to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the tax? He said, Yes. And when he came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first, saying, What do you think, Simon, from whom do kings of the earth take toll or tax? From their sons or from others? And when he said, From others, Jesus said to him, Then the sons are free. However, not to give offense to them, go to the sea and cast a hook and take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. Take that and give it to them for me and for yourself. Here we are entering into the next prolonged body of teaching, which is really Matthew chapter 18. But to, to set that discussion up, we're going to back up and talk about the very last section of Matthew chapter 17. As you know here in Begin in the Word, we've been looking at the, the portions of Matthew dedicated specifically to the teachings of Jesus. That's Matthew 5 through 7, the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 10, the Limited Commission. Matthew 13, the parables, and here Matthew 18. And at the end of each section, you know that Matthew is grouping it this way. He always says the same thing. He says, and when Jesus finished these sayings, and then he goes on. So Matthew 18 is the next in line with one of these of the five uh, prolonged periods of teaching of Jesus. But to set this up, Matthew chapter 17. They had come to Capernaum. This was the home base of their operations, of Jesus' operations here in Galilee. This is the last time Jesus will be in Capernaum. In fact, we know from what goes on in this text, it's one of the reasons I think it's important to look at this, that we're about a month out from Passover. Um, about a month or so before Passover, um, there would be those who would go across Palestine collecting money for the temple tax, and that's what's going on here. The two drachma tax is not a Roman tax in this case. This is a tax that was taken for the upkeep of the temple in Jerusalem. So this is a Jewish tax. About a month or so before Passover, people would go out and start collecting this tax in advance. So we're about a month out from the Passover at which Jesus was going to be killed. So that hopefully places this teaching uh, with a point of reference in your mind. So this is the last time they've come to Capernaum. As they're entering Capernaum, perhaps these collectors have set up a booth on the outside of town collecting this two drachma tax, which was equivalent to about two days uh, worth of wages. And so they come up to Peter and they say they, they seem to recognize Peter as the leader of the, of the group, even though Jesus is the teacher. He's kind of the ringleader of the 12. And he says, does, they say, does not your teacher pay the tax? And interestingly, in Greek, there's ways to ask questions in Greek that um, imply the type of answer that you're expecting to hear, whether it's negative or positive. And the way they phrase the question implies that they thought the answer would be yes. Your teacher does pay the tax, right? The answer is implied yes. Probably before, in past Passovers, Jesus has in fact paid this tax. So your, your teacher, he pays the tax, right? And Peter says, yes, he pays the tax. And when Peter goes into the house, before, Jesus, before Peter could speak to Jesus and ask about it, the Bible says Jesus spoke to Peter first. So Jesus, um, you know, he knows the question that's been asked. He kind of knows what's on Peter's mind. And so he asks Simon Peter a question. He says, what do you think, Simon, from whom do kings of the earth take toll or tax? Now, this is a generic question. He's not specifically asking about this two drachma tax or its legitimacy. In fact, in the law, there was provisions for taxes to be taken for this type of thing. So Jesus is not questioning the legitimacy of that. He just wants to ask a principled question. What do you think, Simon, from whom do kings of the earth take toll or tax? Now, interestingly, the two drachma tax here was a tax that rabbis were exempted from. Rabbis who had received formal, formal training and were, if you will, if I can use a modern term, certified rabbis, they didn't have to pay the tax. So Jesus apparently was not among the formally trained, quote unquote, certified group of rabbis. He was a teacher, no doubt. But in the minds of the Jewish elite, he was kind of an outsider. He was kind of a rogue. And so it's a little bit of a, I don't know if you might say it's an insult or it might just be looking down upon the ministry of Jesus to come and, and ask him to pay this tax. The other rabbis didn't have to pay it. So Jesus here, he's asked to pay it. And so he, all of that comes together. And he asks, he asks uh, Simon this principal question, who do kings take toll or tax from? Do they tax their sons or do they tax others? And the answer is pretty obvious. They tax others. They're not making those and their family pay this tax. That's just a principled question. And Jesus gives the implied 
answer, the obvious answer, then the sons are free. The kings of the earth don't tax their sons. They tax the others and the sons are free. Now, remember, Jesus has been teaching all along about the kingdom of heaven. So now you've got contrast with that, the king, kings of the earth. So when it comes to the kingdom of heaven and the king who is in heaven, that is God, is he going to exact taxes from the son or from others? The answer is the sons are free. Jesus is telling Peter that in reality, I am above the temple. I am above its processes and I am above its traditions and tax collections and upkeep and all the things associated with this two drop tax. I'm above that because I am the son of the kingdom of of heaven. And really the sons of the kingdom are the sons of the kingdom of heaven, and they are ultimately free. So Jesus is implying here that he, even though he doesn't get the certified rabbi exemption, he doesn't get the, you know, the formal rabbi discount. He says, because I am God's son, the son of the true king in heaven, I'm really not obligated to this tax. But he says in verse 27, however, not to give offense. Now, Jesus says, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. There were times when Jesus gave offense. And the word offense here doesn't mean, oh, you've offended me by not paying the tax. It means to cause someone to stumble, to take issue with, to really cause a problem, a scandal, which our, our English word comes from the Greek word scandalizo, which is the word translated here. Not to give offense, to be a stumbling block for them. Um, Jesus says, go into the sea and cast a hook and, and, and do the thing. Jesus as I said, plenty of times he gave offense. He wasn't afraid to teach things that caused people to really take issue with what he was doing, where he upset their expectations, where he did not offer them what they were wanting, but he offered them sometimes the cold, hard truth of the kingdom. Jesus was not as scared. He was not afraid. He was not scared to give offense when it mattered. But there were times when the issue at hand was not central to his mission and message. And so for him to raise a fuss about this would have actually been contrary and counterproductive to his mission, to the establishment and launching of the kingdom. And so he says, in this case, I don't want to give offense. Not to give offense to them. He says, go to the sea, cast a hook, take the first fish that comes up. When you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. All kinds of thoughts about this. Some One commentator says this is one of perhaps the strangest text or verse in all of Matthew. Is it a miracle that seems like a very self-serving miracle? It's different than all the other miracles in the text where the point is to demonstrate the validity of the message. So there's different thoughts. Some actually say that the mouth, uh, when you open its mouth, you will find a shekel is just a metaphorical way of saying, when you catch the fish, go sell it so that you can have a shekel. And a shekel was, it represented a, uh, enough to pay the two drachma tax. It was the equivalent to four drachmas. So he says, you can take that, you can pay for me, and for yourself, for the two of us. And of course, what about the others? What about the other 11? So there's all kinds of thought that this may be metaphorical. Perhaps it is a miracle. I'm inclined to think this is in fact a miracle. But uh, some say that this is actually somewhat of a joke relative to other Jewish traditions about catching fish and finding money in their mouth. It's a joke Jesus tells Peter illustrating how poor they were, that we're gonna have to go out and catch a fish and hope that we find a treasure in the mouth. So there's, there's all kinds of thought about this Whatever the case is, the miracle is not central to the text here. The, the, the point of the text is about the sons going free and how Jesus chooses not to give offense. So whatever we take the miracle or the supposed miracle to mean, the point here is that Jesus, he, he tells Peter that, listen, I'm above this. We're above this. We don't have to do this, but we don't want to cause offense because in this case, it will be counterproductive to our mission. And boy, is there a lesson for me and for you and for us. There are times when the church is called to give offense, where we must stand up for the cold, hard truth of the gospel and God's word, and there's just no other way to put it. It's going to be a problem for people. There are times when Jesus says, I, can't, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Not a literal sword, but metaphorically division and hardship in our relationships with those in this world. There are times when we are called to give offense, but there are other times when giving offense is counterproductive to our cause. I want you to think about that. We're living in, a, in, in, a, in an age here that's uh, just in the last four or five months, the world has changed radically. The expectations 
of your neighbors, of your fellow man are changing rapidly. People are going online and vilifying one another and there's hatred and there's venom in our speech and there's all kinds of offense being taken. Not just offense of the you upset me kind, but people really upset, truly upset, causing them to stumble, to take issue with one another. There are times when the message of the church causes offense, but there are times when we, like Jesus, should say, this is not a good occasion for us to upset those around us. That's something to think about. Thanks for joining us today as we've begun in the Word of God. And it's my hope that as you have begun today in the Word of God, you will live out today in the Word of God.